Hey everyone, it's your buddy Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be jumping into what I would call one of the strongest builds in New World. It's going to be all about the Ice Gauntlet and the Rapier today, as well as the Ice Gauntlet and the Fire Staff, because these two build combos are unbelievable for open world PvP. They're also unbelievably strong in War and Outpost Rush, so definitely, like I said, one of the strongest builds out there in New World right now. And if you guys have died to an Ice Gauntlet, or if you use the Ice Gauntlet, you probably already know this. I did make a PvP tier list talking about all of the different weapons in New World, Talking about the, some of the strongest, and you know, Ice Gauntlet was right in the A plus tier. I put it right under S below the, I believe, Life Staff and Great Axe, because unfortunately, the only the only issue with the Ice Gauntlet is as well as we take a look at the abilities and passives and everything. You know, the only issue is Ice Storm does not stack. So if you have two Ice Storms in the same place, it doesn't do two damage, or you know, I guess I should say it doesn't do two ice storms worth of damage it only does one so you cannot stack two uh you know two players can't put ice storms in the same spot for insane aoe it only like i said it only includes one damage uh or one ice storm damage in one spot at a time so if that makes sense to you hopefully it did i know i kind of rambled a little bit on that but i want to talk about each and every ability each and every passive each and every perk and then also jump into what i would consider like i said one of the strongest builds in new world definitely with the ice gauntlet the rapier and ice gauntlet fire staff we're going to take more time on the ice gauntlet per se, and talk about all of the different passives and abilities, because we've talked about the Rapier and Fire Staff quite a bit in the past. So let's jump straight into this Ice Gauntlet. So the first thing you're going to want is Cold Reach, increasing your damage of light and heavy attacks by 15% for targets farther than 15 meters. So this is going to be very, very strong for those light and heavy attacks. And keep in mind, 15 meters is quite a distance. One way to check out 15 meters, by the way, is put a pin on the map. So we put a pin right there. We are right now 44 meters away. Let's go 15 meters away so you guys can see exactly how far that really distance is if we can actually pin let's uh let's pin a building so we actually know there's gonna be something in the ground right here um so it looks like from here to there's 10 meters from and i'll auto it once we get to that distance because this is important to know kind of the distances so you guys understand how far away to get that increased damage so basically right here is going to be your cutoff this is 16 meters from there to the wagon which is actually a fairly decent distance you know there is many times that you do this auto attack distance but just keep in mind this is where you're going to get that increased damage if we jump back over to the ice gauntlet though there's a lot more to take a look into and a lot more to talk about so there's energized critical as well this increases critical damage of ice spells by 15 percent when at full stamina so you're going to want to remain at full stamina as much as possible when you are in the middle of a fight to continue to put out crazy critical damage on your ice spells we also have the recover 15 mana after triggering a critical hit on a target criticals happen quite a bit that's why we always go crit builds on most damage builds is because there are stats and passives like these that will definitely help every time you get a crit so 15 mana is quite a bit you can get that recovered very, very quickly with critical rejuvenation. We also have Gathering Storm. So hit with three consecutive light attacks to grant player 15 mana. This is, you know, a huge way to gain more mana as well. We have Critical Frost. Increased critical chance if hitting an enemy in a frosted area or with frostbite by 20%. So you're going to do massive, massive damage if they are in that ice or frost too long. We also have the Heavy Freeze. So this is a very, very important part of this build. Heavy attack will freeze a target if hit in storm or with frostbite for one second. So most of the time, if they're in the frostbite or if they're in any kind of, uh, you know, CC at all, you're going to want a heavy attack anyway. And now this just kind of adds into it. It's definitely why this build is so, so strong. You know, getting that heavy attack on a, an enemy in the ice or the freeze is going to continue to continue, like I said, to keep them in that freeze and that ice and to continue on that damage. So this is heavy freeze, one of the main reasons Ice Gauntlet's so, so strong right now. If we jump over to the Ice Storm. So this is an obvious one to take all three passives. And you guys have all seen Ice Storm before, but I'll show you guys here in a second at the end of the video all the abilities as well. But a ranged attack basically dealing 17% weapon damage every 0.25 seconds and slows enemies with a 5 meter radius frosted area. 25% slow, 20 meter range, and a 5 second duration. You can see the weakening gust. Incoming damage is increased by 10% for 3 seconds to enemies in Ice Storm if below 50% health. We also have Ice Storm mana cost is decreased by 80% at full mana so if you use this first that's going to be a great way to reduce the mana cost we also have punishing storm increasing damage by 10 percent for each enemy in ice storm which is going to be insane obviously we don't know how if there is a max at all i don't believe there's a max for this so imagine war imagine outpost rush where there's you know 10 to 15 clumped in a spot you're going to do insane damage with this if you're the only ice staff user for sure we also have oh, i saw i said ice staff but this is ice gauntlet obviously same kind of same thing for me but we also have the ultimate chill which ice abilities chill targets increase ice damage by 35% for three seconds. 
another great, great passive to take. This is going to be the ultimate that we're going to take. And then we go on the builder side of things. We actually take a passive that's called Quick Frost, so increases your speed by 10% in that frosted area. So if you're using Ice Shower, Ice Storm, you can definitely run through that very, very quickly. So Ice Shower is going to be the next ability we're really going to take, and it's going to summon a Shower of Ice that creates a frost area approximately 1 meter by 5 meters. Enemies that enter the Ice Shower will be stricken with a powerful Frostbite. Frostbite roots for one second, blocks, sprinting, dodging, slows, speed by 50%, will remain on target for three seconds after exiting the Ice Shower. Ice Shower has a lifetime of four seconds and only costs 25 mana. You can see why this would be strong, definitely with the increased Ice Shower duration to seven seconds, and any ally, including self, will get that 25% speed boost by entering the uh, Ice Shower for two seconds, and then you have the Frigid Shower, so this is huge as well. Frostbite applying Ren to target, reducing defense by 10%. This is why people do so much damage if you get caught in that Ice Shower, you're pretty much done for. We also have the Entombed, so player can entomb themselves in an ice to become invulnerable and greatly increase mana regen. The ice tome has a lifetime of 10 seconds and can be destroyed. Players have two options to cancel entomb by clusting the right mouse button or break out the ice tome by left mouse button, causing a damaging knockback for 20 mana, which is definitely worth doing a lot of the time. We all have, also have the strengthened entomb, so this is a very, very solid passive to take as well, increasing da uh, really defense by 25% for three seconds after breaking out of Entombed. And then we have the Cleansing Tomb. So cleanse all debuffs when Entombed. Definitely going to be an important one to take as well. So very, very strong build here, the Ice Gauntlet. We've noticed this, how strong it is in open world. My buddy plays it quite a bit. Alf, you guys all know him by now, most likely. But, you know, we play this build quite a bit, and I'm starting to use the Ice Gauntlet. As you can see, I have it maxed out at 20. So I've had a quite a bit of uh, an understanding how this gun, or not gun, but this uh, gauntlet works. You can see here... You can put the ice storm up. You can see how it works, and you can actually apply so much damage as they have, you know, you can see the two debuffs on the bison there. But you can also use the shower. So if you do the shower, you can actually curve it, right? So you can curve, and I can have, like, a nice little curved area here that I can, you know, play uh, play behind or play through because, like I said, you get that speed boost going through it. And then, obviously, you have the entome. And you can see my mana regen, how fast it went from 92 to 100. And it can actually, obviously, be or gonna kind of act as a... Uh, mana potion or mana regen potion because you can use it when you're at zero and get to 100 within just a couple seconds as the bison takes me out so obviously like i said this is a great build to run um as the bison continues to take me out this is a great build to run if you're running a rapier or fire staff if we actually take a look here you know i'm running the rapier right now so this is the frozen lament it does have 28 decks and there's a reason i'm running dexterity on the the rapier obviously this is just an insane insane strong strong rapier because of the repose granting rend and reducing damage absorption by 15 or sorry 14 percent for 10 seconds but the biggest reason i'm taking a little bit of dexterity is because i'm actually going for right now 50 decks so the cool thing about getting 50 decks is it's going to give me increased five percent crit uh crit chance or crit hit chance which is huge because this is going to allow me, for many different reasons, to do more damage. Obviously, crit is always going to be increased damage, but we saw one of the passives in the Ice Gauntlet. Um, let me see if I can find it again here, just a second. So, increases critical damage. So, critical damage increased, obviously more crit chance. That's going to increase everything overall. We also have the recover 15 mana when I crit hit, so another 5% on that. Why not? If we go to the attributes, so I'm trying to get that 50 dex. I'm trying to get 300 intelligence and then 100 constitution. That's the current goal for this build to be absolutely unbelievably strong. And I think that's going to be the really idea when it comes down to the Ice Gauntlet Fire Staff and the Ice Gauntlet Rapier. Um, you know, it's a very, very strong build. And that's exactly what we're shooting for in this late game content. If you are starting to just level it, though, 50 constitution, 50 intelligence is a start. From there, I would try to get to 200 intelligence, 50 constitution. From there, 250 intelligence. 100 constitution and then 300 intelligence 100 constitution if you're going for more of a glass cannon strong really dps type build i do want to show you guys though quickly what i'm doing with the uh when i go to add or sorry weapon mastery i'm not going to talk through but i want to show you guys my fire staff that i pair with the ice gauntlet and i want to show you if you guys just pause the video you can see that and then also the rapier so you can see that these are the builds i like to run with the ice gauntlet you can also run something like great axe going to provide insane cc because of the grav well but you can see here i don't have that quite leveled up too much yet level eight we're going to try by the way to get everything to level 20 so we can keep you up to date with all content uh, i do want to go back though and take a look at one more thing so if we take a look at the actual gem slot i don't have anything 
currently in this ice gauntlet because this ice gauntlet is one I'm going to keep for very long. I actually just randomly got this, I believe, yesterday or so. But, you know, we are going to continue to get better ice gauntlets along the way. So I just haven't put a gem in it quite yet. Uh, but if you are looking to put a gem in it, there are many, many great options. There is one, and I can't think of the name, which I definitely should have had prepared for you guys. I was thinking the opal is a great option because if you're low on stamina, you're going to have increased damage, right? But the biggest one is going to be definitely that slows, that roots, the, uh, the basically extra damage when it comes to uh, having a target CC'd. And that's a gem you guys should be able to look into when you go into the market. You go scrolling through the gems. One should talk about doing increased damage to targets that are CC'd, basically, or have a debuff on them. That's the one you're going to want to take. Uh, I can go over to the store or trading post real quick and see if I can find it. But, you know, you guys probably get the gist of it already. But I want to jump over there and, uh, you know, take a look for myself. Obviously, we're in reek water, so there's not going to be anything probably on the trading post. But uh, we should be able to actually look through and uh, see if we can find something for you guys. So there's a leather working shop. I don't even know where the trading post is here in reek water. I have not actually done to the or gone to the trading post because if you think about it, what's going to be at the trading post is probably about nothing when uh, you go into a level 60 zone. Nothing, you know, too crazy at the very least. You're going to get cheaper prices, by the way, always in Windsward and Everfall most likely. So uh, it does look like it's up here around the corner. So they're really kind of taking us for a ride here. I also want to say this build is very, very strong and not just 1v1s, 2v2s, 3v3s and stuff like that. It's strong for not just small scale it's strong for large scale as well the only time that you're going to have to watch out is you don't want to put your ice storm on somebody else's ice storm that's going to obviously you know hinder how much damage you guys could be outputting you want to stagger those so once their ice storm is done put yours down or put your ice storm in a different spot that's going to be two different things you're going to want to do if we go to resources we go to uh refined resources we go to cut gemstones you can see all the different cut gemstones here now i don't remember which one it is so we're gonna have to take a look through but if we take a look, um, I don't think it's, you know, some of these I know what it's not, but some of these I don't know exactly because I don't use all of these gems. I typically use the Sapphire. I typically use the Opal, the Onyx, the Moonstones. Um, let's check the Malachite. That might be the Malachite. It is the Malachite. So 12% damage against targets with an active crowd control status effect. Slow, stun, and root. Definitely going to be the gem to take when you're running the Ice Gauntlet. And you know, you know, you can understand as why. Obviously, you, you get them slowed, you get them stunned, you get them rooted constantly with the ice gauntlet. So that's going to be the strongest, definitely, when pairing a uh, you know a CC item or a CC weapon like this. I want to talk a little bit more about one more thing. So let's jump into not just the weapon masteries. We talked about the attributes a little bit. We talked about everything we possibly could regarding the ice gauntlet. The only thing we have to talk about now is the equip load. I typically like to go medium armor. You can see that 22.9 is about where you want to be because 23 will push you over the limit. Right now I'm running about 22.2 just because I like this uh, pants when I play the fire staff. So it kind of messed everything up. I kind of rechanged it and I'm at 22.2 instead of 22.9 on the weight. So I do need to fix that eventually. But right now what you're going to want to do to get the max on medium weight is go heavy head, heavy chest, medium uh, well, actually, you can see here we have a medium glove, light pants, and then medium boots is what you're going to want to go. And then you can obviously put gems in your, you know, in your uh, equipment as well. And that can be, you know, ranging from anything with slash damage absorption to uh, elemental absorption. It depends what you really need and what you're dying to that you're going to want to put those gems in because you're obviously not going to want to continue to die to the same kinds of weapons constantly. Uh, but, you know, another thing to do, if you didn't know, you can just take your chest off and you're instantly light. So what you'll do or see me doing occasionally if you're on stream, by the way, I stream at twitch.tv slash iGraphicGuy if you want to follow me there. But basically you'll see that uh you know it's a great way to get around very very quickly if you're not too worried about dying maybe you're pve flagged maybe you uh you are pvp flagged but you just want to get somewhere quickly um you can still kill people like this and that's what you'll see in the clip from earlier in the video i'll replay that clip at the end of the video as well just so you guys can see how the ice count plays thank you guys again for tuning in make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel turn notifications on i'll see you guys all in the next one